In tonight's win over the Louisville Cardinals, it was Chris Bell who showed up and showed out, knocking down not one, not two, not three, not, okay, you get the point, eight three pointers in tonight's 94 to 92 victory over Louisville. Dancing Queen, Party in the USA, House Party. Those are just a few of the songs that Head Hog Sam Pittman has on his playlist. Yeah, Ben, we're pumped up here in the student section, guys. You guys ready to go? The players are here behind me getting warmed up. The student section has been here for hours. It's cold and snowy on the outside of the dome, but thankfully basketball is played inside the dome. Hi everyone, I'm Nick Luttrell. The Orange did it in the most unconventional way possible. Their leader in passing yards and rushing yards was this guy, tight end Dan Valari, and their quarterback, Garrett Schrader, was SU's leader in receiving yards. DeAsia Fair only did this in the first half. Make a layup. But in the second half, she scored 15 points. He needs to have a breakout game like he did in that LSU game in early November when he had 30 plus points. Syracuse needs Judah Mintz to have a game like that because when Judah Mintz plays that good, this is a March Madness team. A 66, 72, and 78 year old, all boxing with their friends. What do they have in common? Well, they all have Parkinson's disease. At Empower Parkinson in Liverpool, they're finding a way to fight back. Sometimes we'll do stations, sometimes everybody will do the same thing at the same time, but it's always a combination of some boxing and some kind of exercise. Licensed physical therapist Patrick Van Beveren has been the owner of this gym for six years now. He says boxing workouts like these demand so much out of people with this disease. Strength, power, agility, coordination, it challenges all of those things that Parkinson's trying to take away. Intensity, is that's the role the coaches play, yelling at people to hit it harder, Three move seconds. more quickly, trying to overload Other those motions, side. make them do more Forward. than what they're Down. normally used to doing. Up. And that's Back. also a group effect. Side. If you're in this group and you look Down. over, and he's doing it better than you, that's stimulation for you. If he can do it, I can do it kind of thing. Along with the intense workouts that Van Beveren puts everyone through, there's one patient in particular that says it's the friendships and community that make her experience worth it. The thing that has happened is we've made a lot of friends, and I don't mean just friends, but people you can share your most feelings with. People understand they're in the same, same boat as we all are. All of these people have become friends of mine. You know, it's in, there, there is a closeness, and we talk about community, but it's even yeah. closer than that. It's like family. Um, and we know them and we get to know they bring their kids in sometimes, we know their problems, so I really enjoy that part. One, two, three, screw me. Nick Luttrell, NCC News. Another heartbreaker for Syracuse men's lacrosse. Welcome into sports. I'm Nick Luttrell. Last night was the second game in a row where the Orange lost on a walk off in overtime as they fell 14 to 13 to the Black Knights of Army. SU had so much chance, so many chances in this game to pull off the upset. One of those opportunities came early in overtime when Christian Mule turned over the Black Knights and had a shot at open goal but missed it wide left. And then it was just moments later when Army took advantage and walked it off in dramatic fashion. Despite the deja vu moment for his team, head coach Gary Gate remained positive in his post-game press conference. The great thing is we, we have a lot of games left against top 10 opponents. So, you know, we'll get one and hopefully two and three. And, you know, we can look back one day, hopefully, at these, these first Two overtime losses as important games for us for how we finish the season. And as Gate mentioned, a lot of games left on the schedule. More than half our teams currently ranked in the top 10. 
All right, going from the turf to the hardwood now. SU Women's Basketball concludes their regular season tonight at North Carolina State. Folks at home, if you haven't seen what this Orange team is doing this year, it's time to start paying attention. What head coach Felicia Leggett Jack is doing with this program is nothing short of incredible. It's been a meteoric rise from two years ago, but also a much improved team from a season ago. Yesterday, head coach Jack was asked the biggest difference from last year's team to this year's. They bought in. That's the difference. Last year, we, we, it was a fight every day to try to prove who we were as coaches, prove what we're trying to do, show them that we care, show them that we love them. That's not who we are. We're a family. We stick together. If you want to talk to us, you talk to all of us. And that family mantra is something you can tell is very important to Coach Jack. And for her team, they're just one win away from the most wins in program history. A victory tonight would give the Orange that record and also earn them the two seed in next week's ACC tournament. So a big game on the line tonight for the women's basketball team. And the same can surely be said for the men's basketball team ahead of Saturday night's rematch with Louisville. But hey, stop me if you've heard this before. SU is on the bubble? Well, maybe not quite yet, but three wins in a row has the orange creeping closer and closer to being talked about as a tournament team. Just two games remain in the regular season at Louisville this weekend and a rematch with Clemson next Tuesday. Nicole and Chile, I put a poll on X earlier today asking fans if they think Syracuse men's basketball will make the NCAA tournament. You can see the results on your screen. Not too confident from Syracuse faithful.